Let us pause to pray and reflect upon the great mercy of our God, who this day gave us his only begotten Son to save us from sin.
It was Friday, and the world waited. The crowds crucify him combined with the cries of anguish. The sun refused to shine. Sometimes it causes us to tremble. The emotions of Good Friday may feel even more raw this year. We are mired in Good Friday communally as the body of Christ. It is far harder for us to escape the signs of mortality and death all around us. And the forecasts of medical leaders are pointing to this Holy Week as perhaps the deadliest yet for our nation as COVID-19 continues to spread. We're filled with fear of that which is invisible to our eyes. Anxiety is rising about what will be next. Aren't we already living in Good Friday in body and spirit? We are grieving our current losses, as well as grieving for what we might lose in the future. I'm reminded this Holy Week and this Good Friday of a teaching I gleaned from my campus pastor, who validated our emotions and our responses to things that are beyond our control. Those feelings of fear and sadness, isolation and lament. He would always say, as long as you have feelings and those emotions and feelings keep moving, you can rest and know and trust. God is receiving your emotions and is holding you wherever you are. Now, my grocery store order this week of Peeps suggests I, too, am eager to rush past Good Friday to go to Easter. But as we listen and reflect on the seven last words of Christ this Good Friday, hear this invitation. It is more than okay to be in a place of lament. Psalm 22, the appointed psalm for today, Good Friday, is not just Jesus' cry of anguish alone. Our God, our God, why have you forsaken us? Why so far from saving from the words of our groaning. We cry out by day, and yet you do not answer. By night, but we fear no rest. We're reminded in Jesus' own words from the cross, there is no human circumstance that is beyond the reach of God's direct experience or God's understanding. I want to share with you today some reflections I found helpful. They come from Bishop Sue Briner, who serves the Lutheran Church in Southwest Texas. You see, she writes, when we might wonder if God has forsaken us, it is Christ's death on the cross that is where we look. It's in the midst of undeserved pain, suffering, and death where God meets us. God pours out God's love for us. It is in the cross that Christ, that God, stand in solidarity with all human suffering. Even in dying, God is not powerless. We are traveling together through a Holy Week like none before. And in this time of pandemic, we remember we are Christ's body too. We also are called to stand in solidarity with others. And so, as we're trapped in our homes... We stand in solidarity with those who have been shut in or locked up for much longer than we have. We get a taste of isolation and confinement we haven't before known. As we get anxious about whether there's enough food in our homes or even at the grocery store, we stand in solidarity with those who are chronically anxious about where their next meal might come from. As we might be losing our own sense of income or our retirement fund is depleted, we stand in solidarity with those who are already without a safety net in poverty. And as we may suffer from symptoms of depression and isolation, we stand in solidarity with those already facing chronic mental health issues. In our corporate suffering, we stand in solidarity 
with individuals and communities who endure pain and grief. This pandemic, Bishop Reiner writes, gives us the opportunity to experience what those who have less privilege than we do deal with on a regular basis. There is far too much Good Friday in our world, my friends. And as we look to the cross this Good Friday, we can speak more of Psalm 22 in the midst of our lament as we also say to God, Yet, O Lord, you are the Holy One alone. Our forebears, our ancestors, put their trust in you, and you rescued them. You alone, O God, are the one who drew me forth from the womb, kept me safe at my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still enfolded in my mother's womb. My friends, our emotions are still moving. God's story keeps going. And as our time of worship continues and we hear each word, each one of those words Christ speaks from the cross, I encourage you to reflect on what emotions are real in this moment for you. Pause our video. Take time to write in a journal or even on a piece of scratch paper. Talk amongst family gathered together in worship today. Reflect on your emotions as we live this Good Friday apart and as we live it together. I love the poet Jan Richardson, who writes of this day. You will know the blessing by how it does not stay still, by the way it refuses to rest in one place. You will recognize the blessing by how it takes first one form and then another. The blessing is what dwells in the space between them. Even if that space is torn, and gaping is what abides in the tear that the rending itself makes. God's blessings to you on this holiest of days, the day where Christ's love is poured out for the sake of the world. Amen. Then Pilate addressed the crowd, saying, Shall I release to you this man called Jesus, King of the Jews? No, we want Barabbas. So Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers placed a crown of thorns on his head, dressed him in a purple robe, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Pilate then brought him before the crowd and said, Here is the man. chief priests and police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him. I find no case against him. But they cried out all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate, being afraid of the crowd, asked, Jesus, do you know what I have the power to release you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me unless given to you from above. From then on, Pilate tried to release Jesus, but the Jews cried out, Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked, Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. 
Then Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. He had placed on the cross over Jesus' head a sign in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to look with mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death, death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Remember us, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. And so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now, when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Since it was the day of preparation, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave his permission. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths, and they placed his body in a nearby tomb. 